Creepy Weasel, argu arguably one of the greatest nicknames I've ever heard, along with probably the greatest nick mullet I've seen since Miguel Torres. And Steve Montgomery says that his strengths are his heart, his technique, his cardio, and his mullet. And there's a nice combination. Right hook, left hand behind it again. Short punches by Montgomery. Holy smokes! Your winner by knockout, Steve the Creepy Weasel Montgomery! Hello creeps and hello weasels. Coming to you live from the Zen Den with a couple of crying poodles that... Do you want to get in or do you want to get out of Apache? My dog just sits here and he whines to get in my lap. I let him in my lap. He gets down, whines to get back up, whines to get out of the room. And then he whines to get back in. He just likes the sound of his own poodleness. I don't know. Anyway, I know you guys have literally all been crawling on the floor, thirsting to death for this podcast or return, creep cast, whatever. So finally back, like after four weeks, going to film an episode with my really good friend here, Christopher Ellis. He's pretty much the, the head honcho over at Colonial Decorators and one of the hardest working people I've ever known. And not only that, he is probably the hardest working millennial I've ever known. I don't know. You or Miles, one of the two. Right. But y'all are y'all are right there competing. <laughs> you well, is Mark technically a millennial? Yeah, he's right there too. Millennial is it? Isn't it eighty nine and past? I, I know ninety. He, I think it's yeah, like, no, he's not. Mark might just be. I, we're gonna count you because you're not yeah. thirty yet, right? No. Anyone right now under twenties is officially a millennial. So you, me, Miles, you guys go harder than ninety. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. Anyway, I'm here to tell you about a hardworking millennial. I'm here to, you know, bring you the most interesting podcast in the probably world. It's it's a pretty big deal. So I know Chris is honored to be here. He really is just so glad he can sacrifice his time after work to be here doing this awesome, worthwhile podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so it, anyway, um, to give a quick uh, actual intro and to put the sarcasm aside, you guys have colonial decorators which by the way i need a shirt yep and, i um, forgot to bring yours but i do have one for you and dude i mean it one thing that always impresses me about the company one is that it really is a family business i mean i don't you were involved in it so i don't know if you can appreciate it from the outside but when i see you and your family hanging out together it's like one y'all get along so well as family but y'all are still able to do business so like you know the, my family and other families would be going you know at each other's throats you guys really all seem like a group of best friends, and even some best friends can't work together. So how do you balance working so many hours with your family and then getting along with them so well? Y'all party together, y'all are just the shit. We pretty much just keep it separate. Anything that happens at work, we cut it off once work's over, and then uh, keep it all family afterwards. Because if you do a work 24-7, you will definitely fight and it won't work. Yeah, but I mean, and what that's a, but not a lot of people can actually do that. Everyone can say that's the recipe, but you guys really do it well, man. I mean, no one's perfect, but I've never once even like felt any, like, y'all just, y'all do it so well. Y'all flow so well. It, it's not easy. I mean, we definitely have our ups and downs, but yeah. at the same time, if you just keep in good energy and just shut work off at a certain time, it definitely works. Nice. And when, I actually didn't ask Mark this when he was on, um, and by the way, guys, if I know that y'all are such huge fans, <laughs> y'all listen to all the episodes, this is the brother of Mark Ellis, he was the drummer and the carpenter I, who I had on, so it's the same company, same family, go back and check that episode out, it, it, it was a great one. Um, but anyway, when, when did your dad start the company? Uh, we've been 30 years now. <sighs> So it's been a long time. It started when he was 18. Dang, God, dude. And y'all, and you came up, obviously, like, you know, seeing that, I'm sure. You were raised around that type of hard Oh, 24-7. So were you helping him when you were a kid? Always. Yeah. Summer, there was no summers off. It was work, oh, pretty much. Awesome. You don't hear that, though, man. Yeah. You don't hear that for kids nowadays. That's why I love this It sucked, but at the same time, we wanted things, and if we wanted things, we worked for them, and it pays off now. Oh, that's, I mean, obviously, that's, I can't wait to talk about some of the, the big clients that you do. And I mean, and by the way, too, guys, another part of the intro I should have given, um, he did a, an, an incredible job. I spent a lot of my savings with this guy's company. <laughs> and let me tell you, it was 
probably the, other than the this guy just did a killer job on my house. It, it's unbelievable how hard they work. The quality is literally like it's second to none. And obviously, you guys have some of the biggest clients in South Florida. I mean, anyone anyone I'm sure lives in America knows that South Florida's it's kind of like the Hollywood of the East Coast. So there's a lot of money here. And, Oh, there's a ton. I mean, there's just constantly building and new houses and remodels and different things that you can do. So there's plenty of work out there. It's just keeping a good business and keeping on top of it and pleasing people. True that. True that. What, um, like, what would you say that, like, for example, you take the same business you guys have now, the same team, and then you take it to somewhere like where I'm from, like rural South Carolina. My town's not super rural, but just it's customer country. service. You bring True. customer service to anywhere. It's gonna you're gonna get a good referral, and you're gonna get calls, and you're gonna get other nice. jobs from that. And pretty much just don't piss people off and show up. <laughs> That's <laughs> as that long as you can do those point. two things and do your job. It 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 really just brings it back tenfold. Yeah. And, and I mean, I had, you obviously deal with them way more than I do, but just my intro in the last couple of years of dealing with different types of contractors for houses and things like that, it breaks anything utility or home related. Like you just said, a, customer service isn't always uh, first on the list. Yeah, no, there's, there's not much good companies out here. You're going to get a lot of companies that won't be around very long. You can't yeah. get them to return calls. It's... It kind of it kind of comes with the price. If yeah. you go with the cheapest bid, you are going to get someone that you know is going to give you a very hard time to get the job done. True. Well, that, well, you know, I actually got a good uh, question for you. What um when I I noticed some of these bigger companies, I'll, I'll stick with like plumbers for example. Like when I was looking for a good plumber, I would look and find like, you know, maybe some of the bigger corporation companies that got several locations and they have amazing customer service, but at the same time, you're paying. The, the prices yeah. are corporate prices. You're paying out the ass for it. Whereas, like, you guys, don't get me wrong, it's like we didn't cut any corners. It wasn't like you were giving me any free work. But, like, I knew exactly what I was paying for down to every last detail. You still went above and beyond. And I understand you, we knew each other through friends and became friends. But still, it was like... Well, the re- reality of it is is probably six out of the ten jobs that people would decline the offer that we gave you what we were going to do yeah. it's definitely too much money which we understand we try to just make it as fair as possible where we make money for our work and the clients getting something for what they're paying for yeah, but, but most of the I time most yeah. of the time people don't pay for that and that's why they don't get to understand what a good job is they'll go for the cheaper bid and get half of the work done and not appreciate what was done yeah and it's very hard to get people to agree to do the full remodels because it is very expensive. Not everybody has that money to spend. Right. So it is a little hard for us as well because it's hard to show what we can do, especially if we're working with existing house. There's not much, There's only so much I can do to make it perfect. But what we did here is replaced everything and we can make it all brand new. Right, right. It's a very big different. You know, it's a big that different. Then actually trying to fix someone's already terrible. 10 people's terrible job. Yeah, and sometimes it costs more to fix what was there than it is to replace yeah, in, in sure. general, and they don't understand that from the very beginning. So yeah. it's, it's hard down here to make Satisfied. people understand yeah. it, but, you know, you do come across the good clients that do, and then we have a good rapport with them, and it, you know, it turns into constant work. Yeah. yeah. You know what, too, is like I kind of – I because I'm a nimrod, and I have to compare everything to martial arts to understand it. And, like – in, in martial arts, you can tell a bullshitter real quick. If a guy doesn't know the details, if he doesn't know at least certain aspects, you can kind of gauge. I mean, if you've been in it long enough, you can gauge how much he yeah. knows. And that was one of the things that impressed me right away is like, yeah, you were coming at me with like extra suggestions as far as price, but you weren't coming at me in this car salesman pitch. You were just like, okay, dude, here's here's what it is. And you and you knew what you – it's just you can just tell competence – when you see yeah, it, and, and you guys just had it. And you it goes both ways. About. When we walk in, we could read the clients right away. <laughs> yeah. We know whether or not we're there wasting our time. We know whether or not yeah. if we want to suggest certain things. Um, we kind of have to feel it out. We throw numbers at someone, it scares them off, and we're not going to get the job. So we kind of have to judge what to even offer. True. Before True. we even start. And, you know, and so there's a, we, 90% of my job is feeling somebody out and sealing the deal because if I don't get the job, I'm not going to be able to do anything anyways. True. True. You know, so it does go both ways. You, you don't want to bullshit anybody. If you get caught bullshitting, you know, that's going to just be people that's going to get passed around. Yep. Yep. You know, so it, it just really just show up, be honest about it. And yeah. you can't really, 
I'm not putting on a sales pitch or anything. I'm just show up and doing my job. And that's, you can't really fake that. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing is you're real with people. And you know, nowadays, dude, every, there's so many fakes in everything now. Yeah. It's, it's gotten overrun with it. One quote, I, I, I think Mark told it to me. And then I, I talked to your dad at his birthday party. And he was to, like, the quote they had was um, about like customer service as far as like you guys will, you know, contractors will leave you hanging all the time. I got left hanging by an AC guy the other day. Like literally just didn't hit me back. Like Mm -hmm. contractors do that, but you guys will just call right away. The second there's an update, good or bad, you call, this is what it is. And they always said they go out. We would let, what was it? Rather, uh, I'd rather let turn you down, you down, yeah, turn you down, you down. Let you down. That's a great quote. Dude. It's um, my dad taught us, you know, early on returning a call is, goes a long way. There's a lot of people that don't return calls or don't even get back to you. And we've learned early on and we've seen because in our own experiences or as well, I can't get people to show up, do work at my house. So it does go a long way. Even if you have to tell them bad news, 90% of the time it works out for the client anyways. Yeah where you can reschedule and it's not a problem. But if you wait to that last minute, they may not be able to reschedule. And now you just, you know, piss the client off just by you not responding when you already knew details. Exactly. Dude. So, you know, and it, it, it's a little hard because sometimes you do make the call and they're very unhappy with you, but that's just, there's dude, nothing, just being honest, though, it's out of your hands part. at that point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. No matter what, you weren't going to be able to show up for whatever reason. So might as well just get it out and tell them right away. Yeah. Sometimes that's, it works in your favor. That, Dude, that's what I'm saying. Your dad put some good values in you guys. Yeah, it's one thing to sit there and talk about it, but I've seen you guys be about it constantly, and it's it's impressive, dude. Yeah, he definitely was hard on us from the get go, but it worked. I mean, it paid off. So, but so that's why we got to continue telling people why you're so cool and why you were, <laughs> you know, destined to be on this legendary podcast. The um. The, like, how do you, you guys switch it off? Like yesterday, your barbecue for Memorial Day and, and the Super Bowl and the national championship. And apparently I haven't even been to the good ones. Those are just the side <laughs> ones. Those and are the warm ups. Just, those are the warm ups. <laughs> how, and, and you, you paintball. Like, here's the thing. Here, let me put it into context for people. Last week you said you did about 70 hours. Yeah. Let me tell you guys. This, this 70 hours, don't think 30 of those hours of him twiddle his, twiddling his thumbs over like invoices. These guys are grinding so hard and they don't just like have a team of guys that they're watching over. They're working with the guys and like basically they set the example and their team follows. It's pretty impressive. So I know those are a hard 70 hours. With that being said, how do you go from a 70 hour work week? Where, and also I got to get back to the question of how you kind of became the guy that it seems like you really have taken head of the company in a lot of ways, you know? Yeah. But how do you go from 70 hours to then just stress-free, having a blast? You you guys have the most epic barbecues, and you're probably one of the coolest backyards in South Florida. How do you uh, do it? It's, it's really, we work to enjoy life, and you're not going to be able to enjoy life unless you do the work. Yeah. You know, I needed to complete a job, and it took 70 hours to complete it. We did it, and we had the entire weekend to enjoy ourselves. So how can you not enjoy that weekend? Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean... It is a lot of work and it is a lot of stress, but we're at the age now. This is the only time we can do it. So do it. I love it. Though, you know, man. but that's the thing is, you know, I know plenty of people's parents that taught them how to work hard, but that a lot of people never taught them how to have fun or, or just how to like you like you do so well. Separate that work from playtime and 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 reap the rewards. Because what's the point of working for something if you're never there? It's like you yeah. gotta actually be there to enjoy. I, mean, it. I don't want to say I'm, I work to have parties. But no. that's but at the same time, that is what I enjoy to do. I like to entertain. I like to have people over. I like to yeah. You don't just party. throw the parties and you know it's um paintball. It's expensive to do those things. True. So you have to grind to be able to do your hobbies. And yeah, the paintball. I like to do the tournaments. I play on the weekends. It's an expense. It's not right. something I have to have. So if I want to be able to do those things, you have to. Yeah. Show up to work on time and do your thing. If I don't get a full week of working and I can't play paintball, paintball's off the table. I'm not going to... True. You know, it's not the other way around for me. So it's it's easy for me to separate it all, you know? Yeah, but but you are literally like, you function like a... I mean, because I know you guys are really a large company now. You function like a corporate head, but on the weekend... You're a, you're a 21 year old kid who just who just got a lot. I mean, you have such a good time. Man. I don't know how I you're can the explain life it. Of the party, it is man. definitely two different people. Um, but it's work awesome. And, and two awesome people. 
it, it is very easy for me to flip that switch on and off. I know. I but like it. I said, when we shut it down, work is shut down. We don't talk about it. That's awesome. You know, I don't. We don't let work affect us. If it's something serious, yes, we'll take the call. But if it's yeah. not urgent, we don't let that ruin our free time because we we True. put our time in. Now work is over, so we do shut it off, and that's honestly how we kind of just keep. And good that's energy awesome. and good, you know, stress free. You just got cool parents and things. You got I mean, that does parents. help a lot. You know, I remember at Mark's when I first met your dad and everything. You, I remember watching you three. You, because I'm creepy and I just watch people. <laughs> it was you, Mark, and your dad chatting and like y'all were just getting along so well. Randomly out of nowhere, it says there's another thing. As like in a total friendly, happy tone, you and Mark start talking about work. It was some about a job he was gonna do with like the carpentry side of things, but you were asking them about it. Like you guys weren't like, no, we don't talk about work because we all cut each other's throats. Like you're talking about work. Yeah. No, I mean, and it, 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 it's in good, it's a, it's a good work conversation. Exactly. If it, if it's, if it's a good conversation, then it, it doesn't yeah. matter, but we're not trying to get pissed because work does get stressful. Of course. You don't see the bad side of work, uh, no, which I, we all I, have, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of stressful days that we all go through and, some days I just know not to bother Mark. I know he's yep. going through his stuff. So, you know, and we kind of, we adapted and we learned those times. So, you know, like I said, it, everybody goes through their bad days, but sure. we're able to separate it pretty quickly. And it's, it, yeah. it is, it is hard to do, but we're able to separate that. I think, I think you're, I think you guys are just a really good family. And that's why you're coming. Oh, for sure. That's I mean, our parents, our parents so are as solid as can be. So it, it, it all starts there. That's awesome, man. No, well, that's what I'm saying, man. Not not a lot of we're we're millennials. How many you know? How many people? Well, like Miles is another good example, where he can go and work his ass off and then just so happy on the side. Which no one's perfect. We all have our stressful moments. But as far as like, you know, I know people that work and that's it, dude. You know, they don't they don't enjoy time. But maybe like four times a year, they're like, oh my god, I did something fun. Yeah. And after that, they're working. And I'm not knocking them. It's maybe because they have so much crap going on. But that's what's impressive about you guys. You can put in a 70-hour week. And I, I bet if you had wanted to, you could have thrown that party, played paintball, gone out on a boat. And yeah, I mean, we definitely... all that one weekend. We definitely have full energy. <laughs> and it's insane. And that the runs, energy you guys It runs have. in the family, for People, sure. These barbecues, I'm not saying like, oh, this is just some dude that drinks. No, 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 no. This barbecue is basically like, you need your own HGTV show. Like, <laughs> yeah. what do we... Okay, your friend Tran must have made... I think what? we had like 60 burgers, probably about 50 chicken sandwiches, pulled pork, pizza. The hot dog, the, the sausages. Picanha, the sausages. I mean, the it, chips. It was enough to feed How, I mean, uh, an okay. army. It, there was, and that's what happens is an army of vultures that come around and all the friends. And the, the cool thing is, is I know maybe when I go over there, I might know five people to start. You end up knowing everyone at the party because there's, let's try to name all the games here. There's darts. Sometimes up to 15 versus 15 people on flip cups. <laughs> Two beer pong tables. And y'all are always 21 covenant. There's cornhole. People are fishing out back. There's, it's on, a, on a, an intersection of a lake, a really big lake in, in the city. So you've got, yesterday especially, jet skis, boats going by all the time, fishermen, kayakers. we got pool in the garage. Pool in the garage. You've got how many snakes? Seven snakes. Seven so snakes. So got that whole little very, thing to check and, a out. Very, and, and this guy doesn't do like, it's not just a bunch of, oh, this is kind of random here. No, you've got legit quality, valuable snakes. And they are taken care of like damn princesses. All the animals are. Okay, let's talk about the other animals. <laughs> let's talk about Blaze and Kira, the two huskies. Tell us a little bit about them huskies because they're wild as hell. Yeah, they're very wild. Blaze has been in the lake multiple times. Oh, dude, he, he goes straight to it. We need to keep him out of there. But, uh, yep, they're four and a half years old right now, two months apart. And uh, they're crazy. I also have the cat that's a month apart from them as well. And, and she's a... A bangle, uh, bangle. Snow bangle. So that's a pretty rare cat, but that cat is... Fiki's awesome. Loud. She's, <laughs> she's so... You know, last night even, she and she was sitting by the door just... <laughs> Every night. The neighbors all know him very well. <laughs> so, But no, yeah, we got the whole zoo there. It, it works out good. It's, it's literally a zoo, and every time everyone gets along at your parties super well. Maybe it's just because there's bottle cap openers on the wall everywhere, and no one has to go look. We just make it good vibes, make it stress free. I make you know, I do my best to invite people that get along with each other. Obviously, it, you know, it's the best crowd of people. I literally got three business cards yesterday. From yeah, man, just make it. Like I said, make sure it's all it's good 
good people out there and good food, good drinking, and what else can you ask for? Hell yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm, I've always been super impressed. And I, I uh, like I said, it's the, these listeners, everyone out there who believes that well, you're putting out a good, I'm proud of you as a millennial. In my little group <laughs> identity as a millennial that everyone just sees as like the first turd dropping before you got the, uh, what are they called now? What's the kids' generation now everyone makes fun of? Oh, shit. Not I, millennial. Uh, came after. Oh, man. I can't I'm even think of it. at the moment. But, you know, most of my friends don't even, they, they just can't. I can't keep up with you guys. Keep up with the workflow, at least. The partying and everything, obviously. Every, you know, we're all with that. But, I mean, but you it's, hard, it's hard for me to find people to even work beside me, you know, to get, to, sure. even to get something going. It, it's... It's hard work. Not you many people want to so, do it. Like you guys did not stop them. You got started before I expected. You finished. Well, technically, you finished later than I expected because I because of how fast you were going. I was expecting you to finish a lot sooner, but you did so much extra. So like you surprised me on both ends in a positive. And we way. also had to wait for the doors. Remember that? Yeah, one? they were yeah. way behind. But see, that's the thing. You say way behind, and it was like, oh, I had to wait another week, and I can't move in for another two or three. A so week, like, a week in me, my world is a lot of I know, hours. I know. It's <laughs> like on your work side, where it actually is affecting your pay and everything, I understand. It's not even the pay. It's just schedule. It's a well, yeah, tough schedule to keep. Pay. I mean, your other jobs and shit. Yeah, but know? but we put we do put pay aside. It's more the schedule. Keep the schedule on flow. Right. Whether you made money or not, as long as your once your schedule starts to get behind, now you're not. It's, it's not even the money. It's now you're rushing things to get things done, and that's when the quality starts going down. So you really have, your schedule is very very important to leave yourself enough time to get something done, yet have something right behind it to start to keep your men busy. That's awesome. very hard to you know to gauge that because things do run behind. We do have to wait for products to come in. And, you know, I can't tell people, well, you got to wait at three months. They need to yeah. be moved in. So we got to figure it out. That's and awesome. um, it doesn't always work out, but it, sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. That's where you run into the stress. But other than that, you know, just bang them out. <laughs> Dude, you got you guys are the best. I, mean, I was on the receiving end, so I know how, uh, how true those words are. I never had to wait for a call. Never had. I don't think there was ever a single issue. Even today when we just banged out the touch-up paint, I was the one who messed that up. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it to me, dude. Well, at least it put one blue up. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get yeah, it fixed. <laughs> um, all right, I, I know i got to let you go soon because I know you got to keep working. Real quick, I do need to ask you, though, because I'm sure this pertains to you more personally. You really, and like all you guys kind of, it seems like do your own thing. Like Mark has his own jobs, things like that. I'm sure your parents and stuff and your other brother, Tim. But you in general... Like, you really have seen, at least the team that I saw, you really took charge of everything. Not even in, like, a, I'm doing it, but, you, like, you kind of took a leadership role. Like, what yeah. how did that come about? Uh, those have been my guys for 10 years. I mean, they nice. worked right below me for 10 years. I started out side by side with them as I took, you know, higher end to the company. I didn't stop working, but I obviously took the leader role. And um, I'm more the one that sets everything gets it all situated and figures out all the problems and gets through all the problems. My guys take care of the problems. You know, nice. I'm on that side of getting all the things figured out because it's not the easiest thing to do. Sometimes you can make the wrong call and ruin something. True. And, you know, that that call needs to be made by me because I'm in that position. Yeah. So, but, I mean, it's awesome. I tell them what needs to be done. They knock it out. I'm right there side by side working with them. and. Yeah. Once you work with someone so long, you know their strong suit, so you set people up in certain areas and it clicks. So you really you know? are just kind of a natural leader, though. I mean, did you know as a kid? That always. Like, always. Yeah. Anything we did. When we played football, I was the one that ran everything. Paintball. When we played paintball, I'm the one that's in charge of everything. You know, I make sure I we get it all situated. The whole... Yeah, it's it's what I like a, to do. I, but you're I, not a dictator. Like you actually do. You always. It seems like you know what you're really good at. You honestly just pick up. I think you find the slack and you pick it up, and that's what leaders do. Well, the way I look at it is, we're all teammates, and we need to step it up in that area. I gotta go fix it. Yeah. You know. I mean, sometimes I come off as a dick. No, dude, <laughs> so, that's the thing. Sometimes I, I come off giving you know good advice. And I don't it, think you come off as a dick at all. I'm not there all the time. Yeah, no, I mean, sometimes, but sometimes when you ask certain things a couple times and it's, you know, it doesn't get done, see, that's the you thing. deal you're, with it. You're ta- but see, you're taking, you're taking it like you're the one being a dick. You're usually probably justified and it's someone slacking and you're like, 
you know? Exactly. But it's a leader, bro. You're exactly. You, leader. you have to just pick up that slack, like I said. But at the end of the day, as long as I treat everybody right, I usually get good feedback. Yeah. You know, it's very rare that I tell somebody something that doesn't get done. You know, that's just the kind of team that we are at the moment. Really? So it works good, man. We, we set them up and we go and... And like, well, like I said, my brother putting all the woodwork in right in front of us. We all work Kelsey. together. And, it, and, it's a, it's a dude, team. You can, everyone was eating pizza, drinking beer after work, hanging. It's like y'all are super friendly. Like, not friendly. Y'all are all like friends of literally family. As soon as, but as soon as it's time to work, y'all y'all look like a damn corporation with like a, an HR. It's the same flip it, of the switch we were uh, talking it's about. It's crazy, able man. To, It looks like the HR is watching you. You've got to be like, like y'all go to this mode. I've never seen anything like it. That's why I'm so proud to have you in our millennial category to, <laughs> to put our name. Well, I'm trying to pull back. a couple of us through. <laughs> yeah, right. Shoot, I need to start working for you guys. So you're uh, the life of the party. You're a leader, naturally born. And you're a painter who paintballs. <laughs> it doesn't get any cooler than that. Sounds like a pretty we, damn good package. We gotta we gotta finish off with our story real quick. Let's do we it. Gotta give them the story. Um, you you know what? I think you got you started off. You were the one. You found the tickets, right? You found well, where he was coming. Uh, my brother actually got me tickets for my birthday to Bill Burr. And your birth, you're December two. December sixth. Right? I'm the nineteenth. Yeah. Right. So we did it for my birthday, and then uh, my other friend that I asked if he wanted to go, Stephen, which he a longtime friend, he has a company that he's able to do barter with, and he got us a limo for the yeah. for to take us down there. So we get this huge limo to come pull pulls up to pick us up for Bill Burr. I mean, you can't really get a much better birthday. Yeah. So it's you. It's you and your girl. It's Mark. Mark didn't bring his girl that night, did he? No. So it was Mark. You and your girl, Steven and his girl, and me. Yep. And we took a limo to the Hard Rock Casino at the Hard Rock Live, the biggest venue they got there. Yep. We did it and, big. <laughs> and, oh, dude, we pre-gamed. <laughs> and it was one of the best nights. That was one of the it, it, greatest it was, nights. Dude. I mean, even the limo ride down there, we were dying laughing. Dude, I was literally <laughs> pissing myself on the limo ride down. And then we get, remember, we got there right as the show was starting. We missed the opener. Yeah. But, dude... Burr must have. What would you say? Two to three thousand people there. Oh, it was, I mean, it, it, the it whole was, thing was full. It was it was packed. And Burr killed it, killed it. I mean, I'm sure we were biased because he was making Florida references, but not only does Bill Burr kill it anywhere, but do you remember the one lady who she got up to walk out as he was trashing? Uh, <laughs> he was yeah. trashing something about women, like Bill Burr does. And this lady gets up and walks out, and he's talking oh, yeah, about yeah. how he's like he was saying like how his he goes. Uh, his wife would see something his dad does. It was some relation about how his dad made him crazy. And the lady walks out and he like trashes her the whole way out. And he goes, or, oh, you know, she could have just been going out to use the restroom. I don't know because I'm an <laughs> asshole. And that's because it goes back to my childhood. Like, he just found a way to make his heckling. He's and just, just on point. Just like spur of the moment. It, 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 that was an awesome night. Awesome night. Awesome night. night. The hurricane jokes. Definitely got to get back out and do it we again. We have to do another comedy. It's been night. already so long. There's a comedy club, uh, Boca Black Box. Dude. I have not heard of it. I didn't hear about it until my uh, fr- my tattoo artist took me there. It was just a good friend. And he kept wanting me to go to midget wrestling. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, dude, if you get, he had me a free ticket. And I'm like, all right, well, if you, I really don't care to go to midget wrestling. It sounds like it's just going to be a bunch of drunk. Like, I didn't know what to expect, right? I go there. It's like Boca Black Box Club for the Yards. It's actually like a really pretty high end club. They they got us front row seats, and there was like six hundred people in there. And somehow they knew someone, so the front yeah. row seats that were like three hundred fifty bucks weren't. They were we got them. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, this is really high end. We're about to watch midget wrestling, and I'm like totally like shitting on what midget wrestling is going to be. It was micro wrestling championship, dude. It. Easily as funny as Bill Burr's stand-up comedy. They all had stand-up through lines, characters. Nice. Some of them were way better pro wrestlers than you would see a six foot five dude. Like they were literally doing backflip gainers with like a three sixty, like insane doing yeah, gainers with a three sixty involved landing on each other with a trash can lit on the head. Like crazy pro wrestling, hilarious through lines. Like I would have watched that any day over like modern day pro wrestling for entertainment because the comedy was Yeah, this is so something worth like, watching. It, and it wasn't even all like midget related comedy. They were like trashing Boca. Like one of them just ripped Boca, the, the bad guy or whatever. Unreal. So we got to go to Boca Black Box. Let's get the limo ready. Up. Let's get the limo ready. <laughs> all right, dude. Well, I know you're tired as hell. You've been working all day. I'm going to let you roll. 
anything you want to say, any shout out you want to give to the company, if anybody's listening that needs some paint, carpentry, Give us um, a I mean, give us a call, Colonial Decorators. Uh, any kind of paint work, trim work, uh, whatever you need done. Definitely uh, interested in checking the place out and give us a holler, 561-702-4919. Sweet. You guys heard it. These guys do the highest quality houses in South Florida. I mean, you're talking movie star quality, and they can do your house if you're a blue-collar person like me. Go check them out if you need some work, guys. They're the best. So anyway, I'm going to get to my sponsors really quick. These are all companies that I personally use on pretty much a daily basis. Uh, my first, as y'all always know, is Garden of Life, or you can just go to their website, gardenoflife.com. They have, the, if in my opinion, and I'm biased, but I really do believe this, the best supplements on the market. I mean, if you're talking about variety, quality, uh, just everything about it like it, they, there's really not i guess those are the only th two things i need to say they have variety and quality go check them out there's things like you know they have supplements for brain function and brain health all the way to heart health for different ages they have kids vitamins uh, it, i won't even begin to start if you go to their website and type in the promo code ambassador 20 it'll knock 20 percent off the order price you can't beat that don't go to Whole Foods. Don't go to those other places and spend full price. Go to the website and use that promo code, Ambassador20. Knock yourself 20% off. And I'm telling you, you'll see the variety. The only thing that'll tick you off is that you can't buy it all. So anyway, my next sponsor is Pure Spectrum CBD. You can go to PureSpectrumCBD.com, and I'm pretty sure you can go to PureSpectrumHemp.com. They have completely THC-free hemp products, CBD, which you all know is kind of like steroids for your immune system. I mean, it's just, it, do your research on it. Very, very good for a lot of things. And they have a lot of different products to meet those needs. They have the tincture you can take by droplets. They have, you know, uh, muscle rubs for whether you've got sore muscles or I just recently had a little knee surgery, put it on the knee. You can have, uh, they have a, a cream for your skin to help, you know, fight acne, things like that, scar removal stuff or at least helps to you know alleviate the scar, whatever it might be. Check them out, purespectrumcbd.com. And if you use the promo code, the creepy weasel, 15% off your order. I'm trying to bring it to you guys. I'm trying to bring you a discount here and help you guys out. So they're awesome. Our last and definitely not least, definitely the most gentlemanly thing that I'm involved in. It's like probably the most adult thing I'm involved in, and they are awesome. We are dappertize.com. They really do have like just so many cool different designs. They're hand knit. They look so clean and like almost old school, but with such a modern design that they're, they're they they basically threw it back with some of the weight like the way it's knit. It looks like you know a tie you wear in the twenties, but the design on it is it's so modern. They're just awesome, awesome ties. And I finally got my first one the other day, and I definitely plan to get more. And if you use the promo code Creepy. Guess what? Just creepy this time. Not the creepy weasel. Just creepy. I hooked you up with free shipping. I'm trying to look out for you guys. My loyal 100 million listeners and, you know, I always try to make sure everyone's getting free shipping at the very least. So I appreciate you guys listening to me ramble. I'm going to try to get these things more to you. Eventually, I'm going to get them on iTunes. This is just something I'm doing in my spare time. So don't hold me to some high standard here. I'm not Joe Rogan. Peace.